but this is something that um, God revealed to me in Scripture. So it says, uh, Genesis 45 and 4, Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close to me. When they had done so, so these are his brothers who uh, sold, sold Joseph off. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now there has been a famine in the land and for the next five years there will be no plowing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So then... It was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh, lord of his entire household, and ruler of Egypt. So I went there first because I think a lot of times in life, we often give people power um, for situations that we feel like they put us in. So Joseph told his brothers, don't be angry with yourselves or don't be hard on yourselves for throwing me here for it wasn't even you who sold me off to Egypt. It was God planting me in Egypt to do something um, for years prior. So now let's get into the words of uh, encouragement. So we go to, um, I want to say it's in Luke, where we're talking about um, Peter on the boat. So Peter's on the boat, and um, let me go to that scripture so I can read that story for you so I understand where I'm coming from. It's Luke 5 and 4. Let me see, Luke 5 and 4. Okay, yes. So it says, When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, which is Peter, Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. Or we've trusted you before and didn't didn't get what we wanted. Or we've prayed before and didn't get what we wanted. But he said, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. And I'm going to stop there. Right? So a lot of times in church, when we hear harvest is coming, the first thing we think is a blessing. My harvest is coming. Oh, my blessings is coming. Oh, you know, what I've been praying for is coming. But a lot of times we forget that harvest is nothing but reaping what you've sown. So if you've been sowing nothing but negative or you've been sowing nothing but spiteful doings to other people, when your harvest is coming, that doesn't always mean my blessing is coming just because you hear harvest. So we get excited when we hear harvest, but we often forget that harvest is nothing but reaping what you've sown, and everything is a seed. We often think that seed is just given in church or seed is just given worship, but everything that you do in your life is a seed being planted in some way, shape, or form. Your conversations are a seed. Your timeliness is a seed. Even even a lot of times, we always say, God, I need you to be on time. He may not come when you want him, but he'll be there. We always want God to be on time, and we have a spirit of tardiness. You have people who literally say, God, I need you to do this on time and that on time and this on time, but they can't show up for anything on time. That is still a seed. Your timeliness is a seed. Mercy is a seed. Even the Bible tells us that blessed is the peacemaker, for he reaps mercy. So everything that you're doing is a seed, and we have to be mindful of the seeds that we're planting. Your posture is a seed. Your posture, when you go to work, you go to work every day, but your posture is negative. Or you go to work every day, but your attitude is negative. All of those things are a seed. And a lot of times, our posture and our attitude could be the main thing that's blocking our harvest and whatever that harvest may be. So God broke what was once in their hand. Because what is a shell for a seed in one season? You got to catch this. You got to catch this because I'm moving fast. Let me slow down. What was, in, what was in Simon's hand was a net. He was washing the net. And God broke what was in his hand because what is a shell for a seed in one season can be a cage for a harvest in another season if it is not broken and given up. So every seed has a shell to protect it from, let's say, the environment, to protect it from birds, whatever you may call it. However, that same seed has to then break at some point for that seed to grow and reap harvest. So what is the shell for a seed in one season could be a cage for a harvest in another season if it is not broken and give it up. God is a God who breaks shells. 
He breaks limitations. He breaks comfort zones. He breaks mindsets. He breaks nets to make room for the flow of harvest that he wants to send to your life. But the question is, what shell has been broken that you've been crying over? Because a lot of times, God breaks shells for our harvest to come, and we don't. We feel like that shell shouldn't have been broken. Because this is another good part. It says, every harvest is a result of a broken shell. So any harvest that you've experienced in life, some way, shape, or form, that shell that that seed was being held in had to be broken. And a lot of times when it's going in alignment to what we what we personally want, because, you know, we get very selfish when it comes to God. When it's in alignment to what we personally want, we like, oh, God, thank you for this harvest. But when God may have to cut off a relationship or when God may have to remove you from a job to break that shell for a harvest, we often don't like that. Mm-hmm. So it says, um, let's see, what did I write? Yeah, e- even this, um, and I'm almost done. When a mother water breaks, right, it's actually the shell being broken that was protecting and nourishing the baby. But for the baby to experience and enjoy the next season of his life, that shell has to be broken. So what in your life has been comfortable? Or what have you been washing in your hand like Peter that God is saying, I'm actually after breaking that thing because there's something more on the way? So my word of encouragement would be know know that harvest is nothing but reaping what you sow. So be mindful of what you sow. And also, don't get so caught up in what's in your hand and focus on what's in your hand and planning it out so much like Peter to where when God tell you to cast out whatever it is that you have, your harvest actually breaks it because God wants to do even more for you. So, and, and last thing, understand that the same shell that may be protecting your seed in one season is the same shell that you have to let God break for your harvest to reap in the next season. And that would be my words of encouragement.